Well, welcome everybody. Uh, we're going to get started just for the sake of keeping keeping us on the time. I uh, appreciate everybody here. This is our fourth session. This is the, uh, I'm Brian Keith with JHP, um, uh, the Director of Urban Design and Planning, and uh, we're the master planners for the Bethel Homes North Downtown Athens Planning Study. Um, and so uh, this has been a, a big shift into a virtual uh, sessions here uh, that we've uh, over the last couple of months. And so um, I'm going to go through just some quick introductions and then we're going to talk about this session, which is on transit and transport transportation and transit. Um, so uh, next slide. So I just want to introduce uh, our guests and our speakers and our moderator. So uh, again, I'm Brian Keith with JHP. We are the master planner uh, for this project. Um, Buck Bacon is joining me. Buck, um, I saw you but it's kind of stepped away. He's over at, actually at Bethel Homes now. Um, but Buck is with WNA Engineering, Civil Engineering, a very respected and really in the know uh, local firm there in Athens. And then our moderator is Zoe Zhu from JHP. Uh, I've seen her, but um, so essentially our moderator is like a hall monitor. They're gonna kind of keep us straight on everything. And then I'd like to uh, welcome our special guest, uh, Butch, uh, Butch McDuffie. Um, He's from, having some uh, sound issues. He's, he's having some sound issues, so he might take a second to jump on. Okay, okay. So with that, I, I want to, uh, at that point, this, this is a very informal um, kind of session. We're trying to translate a workshop, um, charrette kind of environment virtually, right? And so feel free uh, like that. You know, there's always technical gremlins jump in all the time on all of us, right? So step in, say hello, introduce yourself, whatever. Victor Pope from uh, Athens Clark County uh, Transit. Um, although I don't see him on the on our participant list quite yet. And Mark Weaver um, from the Clark County School District Transportation. I, and I see Mark uh, right in front of me. So welcome, welcome. And so our special guest, uh, you guys, please feel free to comment. Um, and we may actually direct questions to you. Uh, anybody feel free to comment, but uh, we're really uh, looking to tap your knowledge and resources and insight. <clears throat> so the next ses slide, just a few like logistics, um, uh, big, big picture things here. Just, um, you'll see a chat button. If you go to the bottom of your Zoom, it's, uh, it's down there, uh, your sort of uh, participants chat, share screen. If you click on the chat, the chat button's over there. We're asking that you please uh, sign in first, your contact information, and also the chat button is where you leave questions uh, raise your hand virtually, although you can also, there's some other Zoom um, under participants, there's a raise your hand button. You can even wave on the video. Um, you can uh, unmute yourself. We'd ask that, um, we're not muting everybody to begin with. We ask if you're not speaking, just for uh, the sake of clarity and being respectful to mute yourself. Um, and I wanna, I wanna point out that all these are being recorded and they're gonna be loaded up on our website, www.ndathensplanning.com. So you're going to hear that a lot. Uh, everything we've done before is there. All this is going to be there. And the chat, um, the comments, everything will be there. So it's a, it's going to be our resource. Um, and so that in, if you want to go back and look at something in the middle of the night in your pajamas, you pull it up. You can view all of this. Uh, you can view the presentations. And you can comment. Very important part, commenting. So again, raise your hand, literally, or uh, comment, or, any, um, or the raise your hand button. Uh, ask, ask that you be respectful. Um, we're, we've, we've kind of thought these sessions would be about 45 minutes long. We've allowed an hour. However, we've been kind of, we've had so much good discussion in the previous three ones. We've been pushing that. And to that end, we found in some of the other ones that we actually have in-depth issues that we're going to need to schedule other sessions. So if things come up that we need to dive deeper into, hey, we'll make arrangements and we'll, we'll figure out how to um, have special sessions one-on-one -on -one or whatever we need to do uh, so that we can get the most insight. So next slide. So again, I just want to point out that these are all conceptual studies, uh, possibilities, big ideas. This is the, hey, throw it on the wall and see what sticks. Nothing is set or decided. We're not saying that this is how it's going to be or anything. We're just saying, what if? Hey, here's an idea. What if? And we are listening to everything. Everybody's ideas is important. We do ask for respect. And everybody be respectful and courteous in this. And, and we've had, there's been nothing like that. Everybody's been great so far. Um, 
And that's part of the mantra. If you were at some of our earlier, uh, and I see familiar faces, so some of our earlier workshops, you know, we kind of preach, listen, learn, design. That's what we're doing. We're listening, and then we're going to, we've already listened and responded. We're now listening again and learning, and we'll be designing. And so these sessions really represent um, the issues that came out before um, and, the, and what we the, culminated in this workshop. Just to fill everybody in, the master planning centered on College Avenue, the Bethel Village um, property there, and as well as the College in Hoyt, Athens Housing Authority. But a key part of this study, again, is to look at the greater area, which is the purple kind of magenta outline and how the connections and interrelationships and how we can strengthen them, develop them, reestablish them, uh, and how this area can work as a neighborhood, a North Athens neighborhood that's an extension of downtown. And so um, this was funded through uh, uh, SPLOS funding. Uh, remember, the master plan is a vision and a guide. It's a roadmap. It is not an exact plan. It is going to establish the, the community shared, agreed upon a vision about how this area will be redeveloped. And the, it's already emerging, the idea of a mixture of housing types, mixed income, um, uh, mixed use is a very important part. There's uh, in different parts of the neighborhood. The master plan is the first step, like any journey. This is the first step. And then th this redevelopment will take place in phases that will occur and, and take years to actually fully come to fruit. But we've got to take that first step. And this master plan will be uh, go before the Athens uh, Clark County Unified Government um, uh, Council for approval. Uh, so it will be presented to the neighborhood and then formally approved. Uh, next slide. So quickly, just some of that timeline, SPLOS um, funding was approved in December 2019. We kicked things off in like January with a number of stakeholder interviews. February, we had workshops, the spring hit, and we were all, the world was turned upside down, right, with the uh, COVID-19 coronavirus. Um, but we continued with technical meetings, uh, online, uh, really swinging and adapting to things. We continued with community surveys that are still online. You keep hearing that website, keep going to it. Our contact information is at the bottom. And we actually had in-person um, uh, resident surveys at Bethel Village, and we're gonna be conducting some at College in Hoyt as well. And so we are now presenting these ideas and sessions. That, and that what will come up in September and beginning of October will be the next round of, hey, these are some the draft master plan ideas. And we'll come back and get input. And then we'll come back a final time for sort of a final draft to the public. Did we hear you right? Did we hear it? And eventually this will go before the mayor and council for formal adoption at the end of the year, beginning of next year, is what we anticipate. And I'm gonna go through these very quick because it's uh, every, the people that have been here before have seen this a lot. It'll be in the record. Um, just overview, remember in February, we did a lot of work. Um, we did resident and community focus sessions. Uh, it's all on our website. Next slide. We did lots of kind of needs analysis. The one thing that is, I do want to point out though is uh, lots of needs and lots of wants and lots of things came out of that. The part of this planning process is making some decisions about what is possible, what is feasible, what has the most needs, what fits, what doesn't fit. Um, and so th those are part of this process. Um, so lots of things express, but there's some reality that will weigh in terms of uh, where, but we will seek public opinion about that, about where and what. And again, just that our website. So the, this was a big fundamental shift from just a website as a kind of um, placeholder and, and just to kind of post things to website as a hub and a portable. I mean, we, we lifted the, the proverbial hood up on the car here on the website and just really supercharged this thing up so that it would become our hub and our portal for all this work. And so if you haven't visited, so, so I'd just like to ask, um, you know, a show of hands or a comment or you can, you know, use any of the little functions. How many people have visited the website so far? So I see, I see hands and I see some comments. So please share that, go to it. Lots and lots of stuff there. Surveys are still there. We, we will be loading shortly um, um, everything that's been presented this week. It will be up there, both the presentations and the recordings of there and the notes. And so again, we will then be asking for comments. Did we hear you right? Did we get it right? And so again, it is our portal for every um, for our efforts, um, and we hope to be back in person. Uh, fingers crossed, everyone, that we're going to figure out some socially distanced ways to do that in the future. So, as urban planners, we kind of followed up those um, workshops in February and spring uh, before. Uh, well, as the, our Corona and COVID was hitting, we were still working on this and doing analysis about the 
the uh, ideas that emerge to the top. And so you see over here, I'm not gonna go through all of them, but there's a lot of things that started coming into the top. You know, uh, historic grid, Jackson Street Art Walk, safety and walkability, uh, the transportation and where the bus stops are, which we're gonna talk about now. But um, then we express it in some graphic means um, that we start to inform us graphically. Uh, and ne next slide. And then we then take that a step further and just talk about how does that graphically, how do things start arranging? How do we start fitting things in? Um, and with that, these key themes emerge, which are the basis for our workshops uh, this week. So complete streets of safety and open space and civic parcels. So we've had those three sessions already. And transportation transit, which is this session, emerged sustainability in green that happens this afternoon and artlets, which is really just expression of the arts and the culture for the, uh, and the history of the neighborhood. So we have an exciting session on Saturday for that. And so next slide. Just, we can have we been working. For, I'm sorry, Brian, can we just pause for one second? Um, Butch, are you on? I'm having a technical issue here. Let me try this one more time. Butch? Okay, can you hear me? Uh-huh, yes. okay, great. We Good were having a little it. private conversation in, uh, on chat. I wanna make sure he got on correctly. Um, and then hey, Mayor Butch. Kelly? No, it's fine. And then Mayor Kelly, I think I saw your hand up. Uh, no, no hand, but um, but, but uh, here. Hey, good to see you. Good to see you, Mr. Kelly. All right, um, but never mind. Hey, and, <laughs> hey I, I'm going through this really fast, um, partly because this is the fourth time we've done it, and a lot of people have seen it. Um, however, um, you know, you can go back and reread other ones, and also I want to leave plenty of time for the the bulk of our discussion. So, um, right. um, you know, we could talk all and on about what we've done. However, we're moving on to the next steps here. So again, the big point is. Um, we've continued to work. We've been, you know, these, the sketching, the drawing, the what ifs, none of this is set. These are big ideas. Just, hey, thinking about things and open space and connections and where things might go and where things might be redeveloped. You know, and, and it, sometimes it's, that's the sausage making and we've been continuing to refine that and clean it up. These are ideas. These are just ideas that are starting. Uh, we've already gotten lots of feedback in the earlier sessions about, um, hey, maybe not so many big spaces, but little spaces interspersed. Hey, no, gardens don't go there. I mean, lots of great feedback. So look at these at your leisure later and comment. Uh, but they're not set. They're just, just the what if. We just, this is if we were in a charrette, we would be taking the, the paper off the, um, the table and pinning it up on the wall right now, right? This is the virtual equivalent of that. And so this idea of, this is an idea of lawns in a more north-south and connections and using, connecting to green spaces and, and how to integrate. And the next one is a little more east-west oriented uh, and redevelopment opportunities, the, the College Avenue. The safety on College Avenue keeps coming up every time, over and over again, it's expressed about crossing it, parents, children, residents. Uh, so th th that is something, no matter what we're talking about, it seems to come up. So I just, um, and then, so with that, we're going to move into um, this topic. So we're supposed to be talking about transportation and transit. And we're going to present some, um, some overview ideas. That I, Buck, I still don't see Buck there. Um, Buck is my he's kind there, of co-presenter. He's, just, yeah, he's there. Buck I think is, he's kind of shuffling back and forth. But again, uh, trying Butch, to get Victor, some distance. Mark, you guys feel free to jump in at any point. We're trying to capture that, you know, informality of a charrette and workshop. But, you know, being on Zoom and virtual, sometimes that's difficult, right? But what we want to talk about is, 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 is transportation and transit. So um, it's really we discuss improvements, to discuss um, big ideas, the what ifs. Um, it's okay if you tell us we're wrong. You know, uh, what we're looking at is, um, or tell us like something else is in the works. Um, we're just, we, we've stepped back and looked at it and we've done resident surveys and we've got things that are coming out and we want to talk about how we can incorporate them in the planning. Next. So with that, you know, we've looked at, and this is our assessment and we may or may not have everything exactly right, but we've looked at where bus stops are, which are the red circle. We've looked at where school stops are because that the reason we have um, Mark on is because the school stops are also, we've heard is um, at certain times, you know, morning, afternoon, that becomes a really high peak time of that activity. Uh, and you can see essentially it's around the edge. It's really on Strong and Hoyt. And then up and down um, 
uh, a little bit on college, but not as much on college as you might think. However, that's understandable. College is, uh, can be a busy street. And so these are where we, and again, uh, tell us if we missed it or, or something's not right. Um, you know, we have heard that there's a lot of traffic down Hoyt that turns and comes back down south, down Hall. Uh, and Hall is kind of a, a truck up there. It's also, uh, obviously there's a stop down there because of the Center for Aging. Um, uh, but we have ideas for how Hall might get reinterpreted uh, into a parkway and other environments and take adva advantage of Pulaski Creek and all that. And that doesn't mean we're going to move it away, but we just want to have an integrated approach to everything. And you can see some of the bus stops on there, but it's okay. But so, some of them, uh, you know, there's a lack of shelters. There's a lack of defined stops or benches or anything. And so one of the things, you know, first is just, hey, how can we improve some of that? How can we integrate the art, the idea of art and history in, in, a, in fun w ways that are expressions of the community, or perhaps uh, we centralize some of them and have more a hub that might, this is the idea perhaps, that maybe it at certain times serves students and at other times it may serve um, the bus needs. And that would be an integration of things. Uh, and Brian, can we pause, idea Brian? Of, course, smart, Brian can smart stops. I was going to just pause and ask the group, since we do have some leaders in that field here, Mark and Butch, um, can you talk yes. about any experience or thoughts you have had thus far um, or discussions about um, combining bus stops? I don't, I mean, my curiosity is, you know, has that been done well? Have y'all thought about that in general, other parts of Athens? Well, uh, Mining a bus shelter? Yeah, this is, this is Butch, guys. And again, sorry for the technical difficulties getting online at first. But I have, uh, thanks, Brian. I have heard a lot of this before. Hey, in the hey, hey Butch, um, you, you really, the, your sound's really low. Can you, it's hard to. Okay. How about now? Yeah, okay. better. Perfect. Okay. Way better. All right, no problem then. All right, but anyway, there's a couple things we should probably talk about. You've, you've brought up. You know, like five or six different things that all come into yeah, yeah, one yeah, part of what becomes transit. Uh, one thing that you brought up that folks, we want to make sure everyone understands, uh, this area is kind of landlocked when it comes to bus service. We can't get in on college from the north unless you guys either, or unless we change the road structure, uh, we can't get under the trestle that kills any service going north or south on College Avenue, uh, which also impedes access. College also is a very heavily used thoroughfare coming into downtown. So that's gonna, issue, you're gonna have your issues with your, your cross, crosswalks that are going on there. The current services that are in that area, you've identified those very well. Uh, all of the bus stops for the uh, athens Clark County Transit Department, the city buses basically, are identified and there are bus stops on both sides of the streets in those particular areas uh, that are in around the, the core area that's right around uh, the Bethel Village, kind of inside the uh, yellow hash marks right now. The other stuff, of course, is along, uh, sorry, along Daughtery Street and those are all correct also. Uh, things that we can do, one thing that we need to know and the group needs to know is in the next 24 months or so, we're going to be working on our transit development plan update, which is something that we do and update once every five years. Uh, it's something that feds mandate for us to do, and it'll, it'll come back through a very detailed uh, public process. I think last time we had something like 15 public meetings as we put this thing together. Now, this is countywide, but we can really focus on this area and see some opportunity. We uh, so it, what's happening there right now is there are, there's a bus in each direction uh, once an hour uh, coming in on college and then turning on to uh, the hall uh, going past the uh, uh, Council on Aging and heading out uh, hall making a right turn there at the, at the uh, Denny Towers. Same thing coming back inbound. Uh, there's a bus comes down there. It turns left and goes down hall, comes back out on college and goes continues down uh, Daughtery Street as well. There's also two, uh, there's another bus that serves on the Prince Avenue frontage of this pro uh, project uh, once an hour as well. So there's two inbound trips and two outbound trips an hour in this general vicinity. 
Now, bus stops in general are placed about 750 feet to 1,000, maybe 1,500 feet apart, depending on the densities that are in the area based upon basically our transit industry standards. So as density goes up, of course, bus stops come, become closer together. The ones that we have here, we, we do have some things that we've been looking at. We did not make, we have a very robust bus stop improvement program that's going on in the community right now uh, with art shelters and uh, some different, uh, we call them type two art shelters, the ones with the, with the uh, uh, laser cut designs in the back of them, like the one that's with the uh, trolleys that's right there on the corner of Jackson and uh, Daughtery Street and stuff. So those things are happening. We did not put improvements in this area because we knew change was coming. Okay, it just makes no sense to spend twenty or thirty thousand dollars to put in a new bus shelter when we don't know what's going to happen in this community right now. However, we definitely want to incorporate those ideas into what this community becomes as far as art you know so every location we've got here now is great i think they work good they're within generally walking distance of everyone we always say and this is a much smaller space but we generally tell people if you're within a, a 10 minute walk of a bus stop we consider you to have public access to public transit services now this is much smaller so everybody's got good access here things that we can do though is we can incorporate art into the shelters. We have a very well-defined program on how to, to design and build an art shelter, design an art shelter and the components that can go into those and the approval processes that they have to go through. We could consolidate stops if it becomes something that we might wanna do. All these bus stops that we have, we show now for high school, elementary school and middle school, those are actually on private property right now or they're on, uh, the property that's uh, Bethel Village right now. So that's gated. We don't take city buses in and out of there. We want to stay on the main roads and, uh, and, you know, make the loop on the peripheral, basically. But if you wanted to consolidate a stop on College Avenue, somewhere close to the Neighborhood Health Center, or somewhere on the other side uh, uh, between the Neighborhood Health Center and the uh, uh, Senior Center, those things can all be done. It's just a matter of specking it out as we as this project comes together. And, you know, something like the uh, rendering that was, uh, I think, one or two slides before this, the large bus facility with some covered shelters and space for more than one bus at a time, those would be ideal based upon what I understand the density of this project to be coming. You know, yeah, become, so Butch, and then of course, Butch, Matt, I, I, I might just interject for a second. You're correct. I want to make it really clear that we are, that, you know, the plan is, the mission is, as stated in SPLOST, is to preserve all the affordable housing that is currently there. And you're really looking at a third, a third, a third. So you're looking at, um, you know, 600 uh, units of housing, more or less. Um, uh, and that's just on the, I would, I would consider that on the, the the housing side right now, I think it's going to be upward of that. And again, this is a big planning area. I'm speaking more about just the Bethel Village site. So I think density is definitely going up, depending on this master planning process, we'll sure. arrive at a more uh, concrete um, window there. I did want to ask what you were saying, though, about the private, um, and we have some residents on the line, so I, I don't want to put anybody on the spot, but the bus st stops um, if either the residents at Bethel there with Buck or Mark could speak to the bus stops that are you said are currently picking up on private property. They're they, well, yeah, they're all Bethel they're site. actually they're they're off the main road. They're not on public roads. They're on the property. If I'm looking at this map correctly, uh, yeah, they I think are you're correct. The, 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 they're primarily, on the they're on uh, Strong Street. Um, well, the school stuff, Strong Street, but but uh, Hoyt. I don't think and, the buses uh, go through the property is what I'm trying to say, because I don't think they'd be right. able to get out either. It's one you are one correct. Okay. You are correct. We do go down between, um, uh, on one of the streets, we do pick up right at the back gate of, mm -hmm. of uh, but that's the only, that's the area that we generally go through. Okay, and there are no strong. covered, yes, it's Strong Street, but and it, there, currently there are no covered shelters. Anything that we're looking at right now are not covered? That's well, well, no. well, go ahead, Mark. That uh, for the for the students, no, there's no cover for them. And then Butch, on I'm talking more on 
the property not uh, darted. For, for the for the for the yes, we can shelters could be incorporated into this project. Uh, that that would not be a huge issue. It'd be it'd become part of the project just like we do with any time a uh, developer comes in and starts putting in uh, new facilities. W when it came through, when the project comes through plans review, we would look at it and say, hey, you, it looks like you got this much density. You have this much propensity for transit ridership. You need to put in a shelter here, here, and here, based upon our guidelines that we would normally use. Now, and then I guess right now we don't go down Strong Street though. That's the difference. We we go around uh, the north side of the Bethel Village, and on College and Hull, and we don't use Strong Street. So I think that's that's the difference that we're talking about here. We do that because we're going around the peripheral, and you know. Running buses or city buses, of course, is a little different than running uh, public school buses. They have a little more flexibility in just serving their, only their students. We have to be mm -hmm. open to anyone who might want to ride the service. Now, as the, pro as the uh, project comes together, I'm sure that we could work together to, co to coordinate how to bring these locations together and, you know, maybe have a consolidated stop for public schools and public transit in the same vicinity, the same area. It's just so right what? now, what we do is we serve, our, our, our priority has been serving neighborhood health center and uh, council on aging council locations on aging. versus- I mean, you're, you're right at Denny Tower as well. Yeah, oh, yeah, so you're, yeah, you're, we've, yeah, we've got the, like I said, we've got the peripheral covered. We just don't go down strong. And if you look at the walking distance based upon how we view public transit services, you're really close to bus stops all over there without going down strong. We can't go down every neighborhood street. It's just right. We kill our. No, I think I think schedule. you're right. right. I I want to share a couple of things that were brought up on that point, and Mark, I want to definitely pass it to you. We've heard a lot from the residents and and some conversations and of course polling um, surveys, but but in general observation too is the site is quite uh, has a lot of topo, and we have seniors that are not they're just not making that distance. So I'd love to talk offline with you, Butch, on like. Are there other ways? I know that there's standards for deciding the distances of bus stops, but if you have a known um, points of origins and destinations, that's 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 a piece of cake. We can work that stuff in, especially as the transit. Like I said, the the new transit development plan, which is basically our strategic plan, mm -hmm. is due for an update. You know, it's it's it runs through 2022 right now, so it's kind of online with the project as well. So as the project comes together, we'll okay. be able to say. There's going to be senior housing here. There's going to be, you know, whatever uh, public school bus needs to stop here. We can bring this stuff together. I mean, it's great to be on the front end of this instead of on the back end of trying to figure out. Anyways, the stops that are there now probably came afterwards, I'm sure. Okay. Right, right. Well, and that's why we, we reached out. Um, and we, essentially, we want to just help develop partnerships here uh, and so that it's a win-win for everybody. Hey, Buck, if you're on... Um, Go back to the, go back to the slide. I, I want Buck to talk about because um, it's a, per, a pretty important thing we heard about that Hoyt and Hull intersection and safety right there, and where the transit stops are. We we heard that particularly. Um, if you, are you okay. on Buck or? Um, yeah, I'm I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So so yeah, we we had a couple of calls with with Eve at the uh, Athens uh, cancel on aging and uh, you know we heard some feedback um, you know some some challenges with pedestrian crossings at the intersection of uh, Hall and Hoyt uh, we've got uh, some some um, some speeding issues there at that location uh, and, and then also some drainage problems that they'd like us to consider and so trying to trying to envision really what that intersection looks like Butch and, and how we incorporate pedestrians and, and bus stops at that location and drainage and right. drainage that's right yeah. yeah and just just kind of a little historical type thing there they're under the canopy on what would be the south end of the old train depot there when yeah. we talked about putting shelters in there 10 years ago uh you know there was right away issues and things like that and sidewalk and of course the space was cramped and at the time the folks that were working with us through the council of aging uh they felt like any passengers could wait underneath the southern end of the uh, station there and then just catch the bus when it came out. Now, and of course, all that's transitioned and we're making a lot of changes here, but 
again, like I said earlier, we can work pretty much anything we want into this particular location. As long as the stops to me, uh, my preference would be you know, almost straight across the street from each other, as close proximity to the crosswalk as we can get them. We generally stay 25 feet away from the corner or the crosswalk just for sight distances for other vehicles or people coming around buses and things like that. But we got standards for that stuff. But uh, again, it's this is great to have the opportunity to try to fix these challenges now. I want to also just, I just also really want to mention that I think that we would be benefit from having the interim conversation. We know that there will be eventually a lot of, of work done on the site, but I, I have, I feel strongly that there may be, and, and uh, those in the room at Bethel, please speak up if I misstate this, but maybe there's something temporary. This came up on the other call. Um, maybe there's something temporarily that we can do for a safer crossing across college to the lay center from Bethel, even in the meantime. Um, I, we want to just kind of raise that up as we're digging up information because the implementation of what we're talking about is going to be over years. Um, and so same thing, Butch, as you're talking about, I, I certainly, this is obviously a local government decision. I don't want anybody to waste funding, but to the extent that there can be a temporary shelter, I don't know if that's something to look into no. for covered We stop. can definitely look into that. I mean, I mean, there's always a cost associated with those kind of things, but sure. I know that we're not opposed to it. I don't believe our mayor and our commission would be opposed to us looking into that option. We just have to identify the funding to do something temporarily. Uh, now, as far as the crosswalks, do we have a traffic engineering or transportation public works representative online? Because, you know, that's that's kind of out of our uh, lane there, to, so to say, when it comes to crossing college. <laughs> Yeah, but, but well, uh, um, we've had other conversations on that. So, yes, yeah, okay. we've had we've initiated those and, and um, we understand. Yeah, college college is uh, that's its own topic in itself and how to handle it. Um, yeah. Uh, and if we can go to the um, next slide here. Um, can, I just jump in? can I just Please. jump in for just a moment from a, from a school from a school bus transportation standpoint? Um, I just would like to make sure that we keep the students as safe as possible uh, and to have a, a stop on a peripheral wouldn't, wouldn't really work uh, for that be, just because, you know, students may run and those kinds of things. And, and that's the reason why we pretty much have our stop in the strong, you know, on the strong street area. So if, you know, if I could just kind of put a plug again, if we could find some type of shelter that we could put in that area, if, if the streets are going to remain the same, if we can find something so that the students could get some type of shelter, uh, you know, during rainy days and those kinds of things, I think that would help. And then that also keep them off of the main corridor and the main streets. Yeah. Um, and, and Brian, we're getting a lot of comments here live at Bethel Village. Can we, can we pause and, and, and let, these folks weigh in a little bit? Please. Yeah, please. John? Um, yeah, I was agreeing with, I don't know who that is. Uh, uh, Mark Weaver the, with, with Clark County. Clark County District. School District. Yeah. Okay, um, I was agreeing with him about the shelters for the children because the, where the bus stops are currently, they aren't safe. Um, they're too close to the road. There are issues with um, cars driving around the school buses. Um, just when the buses are stopped and the kids are loading up or even getting off of school buses kids do run to those uh to the bus stops just to catch the buses either from end to end and it it just it depends on the weather like it could be raining one day and it could be freezing cold and it's just because the property is so big like they're just in the i don't know just the locations are inconvenient for a lot of the residents I don't think, I mean, you have some parents who work at night and they're just kind of pushing through the morning just to get the kids to the bus stop. Some send their kids out, you know, alone and, you know, just us as parents, you know, we help watch these kids, but some are so small that they're just kind of all over the place. And it's not safe when they're so close to the main roads and it's so much traffic, even early in the morning. Hey, thank you so much. And that echoes what we've heard as well previously some of the same comments and survey um hey christina how many schools did we kind of determine um have bus stops there um was it six eight i mean it, it's surprisingly large number of schools that are served um uh, because of um ages but also um some of the programs at different schools 
That's correct. That's correct, Brian. Um, I don't have the exact number, but we do have all ages, the elementary, middle, and high schools that are serviced uh, in that area. Hey, back to Buck. Um, any other um, resident comments? Really, we want. Good. We're, we're good. Oh. Thank you. For, oh, yeah. No. Yeah. Well, I do. Um, okay, Sean. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know if you talk. I'm, I'm a little late. Sorry, everyone. Um, it's okay. It was uh, issues as far as the elderly. Um, they were discussing over um, during the surveys about the transportation or the bus stops being too far for them to just walk to. You know, some of them are dependent on canes and some wheelchairs, you know, walkers and their, their only means for transportation is the city bus and the bus stops are too far. It's so hilly, like they're either walking up a hill or walking down a hill, you know, they could possibly fall, break a hip, something, you know, just to possibly try to make something a little more convenient. They were even uh, discussing possibly a smaller transit to come in and pick them up, you know, to just, I mean, specifically for the elderly. Can I jump in, Brian? Oh, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. And I Hi, also want to acknowledge that Broderick um, has raised his hand. So, Broderick, you can go okay. after you know, I'll try to address your question, ma'am. Uh, as far as uh, another vehicle coming in, we have a program called the Lift. And the Lift is uh, designed for individuals that do not have the physical abilities or mobility uh, issues. Uh, or wheelchairs or whatever it might be and cannot access the regular city buses that we have. Uh, there's a process you can, uh, we can point people to our website, the uh, accgov.com uh, forward slash transit. Uh, and they can, and I, of course I can get you guys the phone number as well, uh, where individuals that might need, uh, can't access a regular bus stop uh, could possibly get that service for them. And that's a door-to-door -door service that's used. We operate with the smaller vans. I think most folks are kind of familiar with our Lyft service. So if someone's got an accessibility issue uh, because of distance, because of weather, because of just a mobility challenge that they may have, they may qualify for those Lyft services. Uh, they just have to be certified uh, through a medical process uh, and through the uh, process that we use for that. Uh, and we've got folks that are trained to do that type of stuff. So if someone's having that challenge, let's try to get them to talk into the lift. Okay. Um, other? Okay. Yeah, but you, you I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Okay. Um, I think, well, we're, I, I made it aware to them that um, there is a lift, but I think they're thinking about something that's more regular, like the city buses, like as the city buses come around, maybe it's a smaller, service that comes around on a regular, you know, and they don't have to call because we, um, that, sadly, we have some of the elderly who can't read or, and, or they can't even write. And, you know, we can't just be there to hold their hand, you know, through the process to try to get them a lift and get them to, just to the grocery store or just right. to grab a two liter or something, you know, just a loaf of bread, you know, just something that could possibly come around regularly, uh, like the city buses do, even if it's like every 30 minutes or, Every 45 minutes, I don't know how it's timed. I don't know the process with the city buses, but I, something I can, that's more regular to- I can try to address that. To um, accommodate to the elderly. Okay, well, what, what you're suggesting is something that we in the transit industry would call, would call a neighborhood circulator. Uh, something like a smaller vehicle, maybe a 30 foot vehicle, maybe a large van that's accessible uh, that would do uh, circulate throughout a neighborhood, maybe twice an hour or something like that. Uh, that's something that could be designed. Uh, and as, like I said earlier, and I know you said you had came in a little bit late, as we're doing our transit development plan in uh, next summer, 2022, uh, early 2022, we'll be going through this process. Uh, we need to identify that and identify those needs. And of course, at that time, we'll identify the cost factors for those kind of things. Uh, just in general, operating a regular city bus 12 hours a day, 359 days a year, not counting the holidays that we have, uh, is about $300,000 a year. So there becomes an operating cost that comes along with that. 
Now that's something that's up to our mayor and commission. Our mayor and commission control uh, our budgets. Uh, we request funding and of course uh, they allocate funding as they can make it work with all the other departments throughout the county. But as the this project comes together, uh, what I would uh, suggest is that we continue that process to say that this community would like to see a neighborhood circulator that can get around as well. And then again, we'll identify what that could be, what the cost for that kind of stuff could be, and where exactly it would actually go. So that might be the idea of, you know, a vehicle that does go down Strong Street versus having a 40-foot bus that doesn't go down Strong Street right now. So there, there, so there's, like I said, there's, there's potential in this entire project. And as we move forward, as we identify where the senior living is going to be, that would be something that would be very critical to our transit service development plan because you know if we're going to put the senior uh, uh, center or sorry the senior living on the very north end of college where it is right now where we can't get a bus to because we can't go under the trestle or turn around up there you know maybe we flip it closer to Dordery Street and then there they so, get them and so that's I mean there's a lot we could develop out of this. Butch, can you send us the, I mean, can you keep um, both the planning team in the loop, but I'd also like to make sure that the residents at Bethel are involved and College and Hoyt are involved in any kind of, any opportunities they have to continue to weigh in on the transit plan that you're developing. Right. Well, th that will not start until late uh, 2021, early 2022. It, it current, the current plan is 2018 to 22. So we'll, we, of course, we'll go through our whole RFP process for that type of stuff, and then we'll do that transit development plan update during 2022. But we will be happy to work with all of you uh, and this group uh, in particular as we move forward with the development of this, because like I said earlier, this is optimal. I mean, what we're talking about right now is the best thing we could be doing. Uh, like the example I was just using, where the seniors are living at today in this neighborhood is as far as they could be away from public transit. If they were up by Daughtery Street or up by Strong Street, uh, instead of on the, what well, I would I can't call it a dead end, but on, on the north end of college where we cannot access with a 40 foot transit bus, no wonder they got to walk all the way down. Yeah. You know, so uh, this is great to have the opportunity to, to fix these challenges. Okay. Hey, this is a great discussion. Up. Roderick had this hand up. I know we do have some more slides to go through, but this conversation is so. I, I do want to go back to. I want to go back to one um, slide. Just go back. Hey, the the idea of the central no, the image, the centralized bus stop, and the idea of a smart bus stop. You know, by by having um, centralizing a few or one, still perhaps having others, but we can then dedicate and have a smart stop um, that can have uh, lots of information. It can even help. Um, bridge sort of some digital divide. I mean, this could become a Wi-Fi hotspot. There's a lot of ways to think about this um, uh, and the advantages of that. And I'm not saying do away with everything, but um, it's, a, it's a way that we can help um, connect. There's a lot of disconnect going on in many different ways. And this, this can be a multi-pronged approach. So Might I'm be a way broader... to slow down traffic on college. <laughs> yeah. Start well, some traffic we're calming. hearing that over and over again, right? <laughs> And we talked about that, the very first one on complete streets. And so we hear you, um, uh, but you're, you're right. You're right, you, you hit the nail on the head. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mr. Flanagan? Uh, yes, thank you. Can y'all hear me okay? Sure can. Yes. All right, cool. Um, yeah, thanks for the opportunity to speak to this. I definitely want to yield to um, all the residents that there in Bethel. And I want to also um, echo the sentiments that Sean was speaking to earlier. Um, and because of, at one of the earlier planning sessions that was in person, I heard residents speaking to the same issue uh, about the crowdedness of the bus stops and the location of the bus stops, the school, as well as the uh, uh, city transit. Uh, so I definitely want to echo those sentiments. Um, but then also, uh, one thing I haven't heard discussed yet, too, is like connectivity, what Butch was speaking to earlier um, about um, point of origin and destination. Um, and kind of wondering where the process is of creating the, uh, the substations. Uh, I remember there was conversation around doing that maybe at the last five year planning session about creating substations that, so that we can get uh, maybe an expanded reach on our transit system so that people in neighborhoods uh, like Bethel 
uh, can get to uh, good jobs like at Caterpillar. Um, after speaking with uh, more than a few residents, um, some at Bethel and some uh, up North Avenue in the Fourth Street Village area, uh, there was one young man that passed his welding certification but could not take that job in that position out at Caterpillar because they didn't have the transportation at that time to get out to Caterpillar. Um, and, and, you know, I've talked to other, several other residents about the same thing. Um, so just thinking about connectivity from pla places like Bethel going out to employers that offer great, good jobs with good benefits um, and, and thinking about that, like where, where are we uh, and how does that relate to this particular um, development and project? I can address that, Broderick. How are you, sir? You're doing well. Good, good. Well, the what you're talking about is the remote transfer facilities that were included in the 2018 TSPLOST. Mm -hmm. uh, there was $500,000 allocated in the TSPLOST project that our citizens approved uh, back then to develop three remote transfer facilities. Uh, one of them was on the southeast side. One was out on the east side in the... Uh, Lexington Road, uh, Gain School Road area, and one was out uh, along Atlanta Highway, somewhere between Alps and, uh, say, Mitchell Bridge. Uh, funding for that is in one of the final tiers of the TSPAWS program, so I don't think that funding is allocated until 2022 or 2023 right now, so that's why that hasn't moved forward. Uh, we elected to do some of the other TSPAWS projects first, before we went to the remote transfer facilities. Uh, additionally, in that also was some plans for some bus expansion services, buying more buses and, and providing more services. And if I, I don't know if you guys can all see the chat, but you'll note that mm -hmm. our mayor has made a comment that we are gonna have another T-SPOS coming up and we're hoping to identify some additional funding to add some additional services, add some additional equipment because they always have to add stuff Proportionally, I remind everybody that, like I said earlier, $300,000 a year doesn't buy the bus. Uh, that just buys the people to run the bus and take care of the bus. The bus is going to cost you another $700,000. And depending on what you're doing, uh, it might you might need two buses. But I do think that we have a great transit-supportive community. And when this comes around again, I think we'll be able to identify – some future needs and that is it's in our current transit development plan right now to expand out to caterpillar to extend, expand into some other areas unfortunately we have not been able to identify the funding locally to cover the cost of that at this time you know we've got like i said earlier we've got a lot of uh folks or a lot of uh, projects throughout the community not trans not just transit but all our parks our roads our streets our bridges everything and uh, it, it's very hard for our mayor and commission to identify the funding. You know, when I go down there and say I need, you know, six hundred thousand dollars this year to do two bus routes, and you know, parks are standing there, and police is standing there, and everybody else is standing there too at the same time. So our mayor and commission are working very hard to identify the funding for those, and they're in the plan. We just got to find the funding, and, and potentially this upcoming T boss could be part of that. Okay, cool. That's great. That's great. Hey, can we, I, I just want to uh, keep things going here. Uh, we got a few more things to talk about, and uh, uh, we, we can go. Um, I, I want to share a little bit of resident survey really, really quickly here. Just um, we did ask, and you can see um, how often uh, we had a lot of people say they didn't take transit, but um, well, almost kind of uh, even that do take it and don't take it. Uh, and I think there's some reasons why that come in the next question about the convenience and safety. Um, Although most people do think the bus stops are reasonable and appropriate. Again, these are based on who took the survey. That might not be everybody. That might not be all, all the residents. It might not, you know, it is, we had approximately um, 85, uh, I believe, 80 some take it. N next slide. Um, we also want to talk about um, broaden the idea of transit and transportation and some big picture thoughts of, um, what about bike share? You know, especially if bike share is incorporated into multiple spots so that there's the ability to have um, shared vehicles, shared bikes within the community, but also potentially within other parts of, of Athens. And so these are just what ifs, nothing said. It's just sort of, hey, throw in a dart on the map. Uh, more thought than that, but the idea of some bike share 
uh, spots. And we've shown some examples. This is actually in a community of, um, of uh, Spartanburg, South Carolina. And we actually did some master planning and these bike shares have come in as an initiative to help link uh, around and it's small scale. They don't have to be giant efforts. Um, next one. Uh, Brian, before you leave that point, if you uh, real yes. quick, just to add, uh, every Athens Clark County Transit bus has a three position bike rack on it. So mm -hmm. if it's a privately owned bike by, you know, citizens, they can use their bike and they can access the service and then have expand their commuting range by take using a bike to get uh, to their final destination. And that's great to know. That's a great thing. Are to there are there bike programs that um, Mathens Clark County? I know these are popping up in a lot of cities. Is there something here that um, I'm seeing in the chat? Bulldog bike share. I think the university's got one starting. Okay. Yeah, and I think Andrew Saunders would probably be the better person to answer that question. But I do think they are working for some on some ideas. I know the university's got some uh, some programs happening out there. Okay, Carol, you're on. Could you? Yeah. Do you Anything yeah, yeah, I, I can. Can you hear me? Uh -huh. Yes. Okay, good. I'm, I'm using my iPad now. Um, yeah, actually, uh, the the Bulldog Bike Share people, um, I, in my role as chair of Athens in Motion, we had, um, I bumped into the guy, um, and he's coming to speak at our Athens in Motion um, meeting this month, along with, well, like, this is obviously going to be on WebInx, um, like one of their readers regional directors too, who had, was telling me about a lot of communities um, where there's a university program and also a city program. Um, I, haven't, I haven't yet talked to our mayor about this, um, but I know that the people on the uh, commission and there's a lot of people in the community who are really interested in seeing that expand. Um, so th that would be that would be wonderful. And, and the other thing about that is a lot of these programs have um, equity um, clauses in them that guarantee or require the companies to work with low income communities so they don't all get all the bike share programs don't all get you know radiating out of five points and uh, the boulevard area so um, yeah there's a lot of people interested in that <laughs> and, and then Carol on on that point they also have programs I think for not necessarily having to have credit cards for use, right? Like there's yes, their methods yes, yes. for loading cards. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's, it's actually really, um, it, it's really economical. Uh, I mean, you can get a pass for one of these uh, bikes to use all year round for $6 a month and you have like 45 minutes to use the bike to get it somewhere else. And they're all e-bikes as well. So there's electric assist. So they, they help with those hills, evening out the hills of Athens. Nice. Okay. Oh, that's great. Yeah. That, it's wonderful insight. Again, that's why we're doing these sessions so we can learn uh, and get this insight and, and learn what's already ongoing so that we can leverage these into this master plan and this vision. Um, the, the next one, I want to talk about rideshare. I also want to mention rideshare is not just sort of the big companies, but it's also um, the, the more homegrown effort of just um, carpooling. We, we, we've heard that a lot, that people have um, but ride sharing is something that's just growing across all um, uh, areas and also, uh, you know, all kind of income levels as well. It's a it's a way of um, uh, of uh, of people providing an alternate form of, tr of transportation. What we'd like to kind of think about is that there maybe are some locations that might be integrated into other transit pieces, so that they become um, carpool locations, ride share locations, and it's a known spot. Uh, that we can encourage that so that everybody will have greater access and we can work on that disconnect, the disconnect on a variety of levels. Next. Again, that idea of school bus and maybe maybe their, their hubs. Um, we, we've kind of talked about that a lot. So, I mean, again, these are just spots. Uh, so I, uh, it, the, it, the final, it will finally depend on how the master plan envisions where things go because seniors probably need less school buses than other areas, family areas, right? So, um, but again, the idea we've already seen strong um, has currently is identified as where a lot of stops are. And so may, maybe there's some consolidation in that area. Um, next. 
So I'm going to go through these. These are going to be posted on, but we just wanted to share a little bit more on some of the resident surveys and just some of the comments that came. Um, and a lot of them are on safety that we've already heard. Safety, convenience, um, uh, safety as a parent, that kids um, got multiple, parents might have multiple kids with multiple stops. And, and then um, that supervision, lighting, coverage. So I'm, I'll let people look at this in more detail on their own. Um, next so, um, hey, did we, did we, this is kind of where we, we stop and pause and want to ask questions. Like, are there any additional items? I mean, anything that we uh, missed? Is there anything that uh, anybody wants to kind of talk a little bit more? Um, and, and I'll add, because I, I can keep talking, it seems. But I'll add that, um, hey, um, we are totally open to follow-ups on anything. If any, somebody wants a personal or organization wants more in depth, um, please let us know in the comments or emails. Um. Yeah, and, and Brian, if I can add real quick, you know, there are a lot of uh, a lot of discussion uh, on in this session about pedestrian safety and crosswalks. And I want to remind participants that uh, the first two sessions we had a lot of great input on pedestrian crossings and safety, and, and encourage folks to watch those those videos. That's a great point, Buck. So everybody, you know, um, if you just want some, sit in your pajamas and some some fun um, watching, right? Or whenever you want to watch it. But we, there I love was a it. Lot yeah, every time you mention it, every time you mention it, it's somebody in their pajamas late at night watching videos. Of <laughs> <laughs> the point is, it's accessible anytime, anywhere. I had a quick question. Yes. Um, as I guess, as some of these future plans and future bills actually come to fruition, like how would residents be plugged into employment opportunities as projects get to be, um, I guess, built out? Um, is there like a protocol for that in place? Uh, I'm glad. I'm glad you asked. Actually, I was just meeting um, with Miss Avita with Commissioner Thornton. Um, uh, Kishan was that two weeks ago? I can't remember. Not that long ago. <laughs> yeah, about a week and a half ago. Yeah, so um, Broderick, we are we are already kind of trying to get ahead of that. Um, it's on me right now to try to do some projections and at least be able to say, I mean, a lot of it again, everything depends on master plan, but we can put, start putting something on paper to say there'll be some temp jobs related to construction, there'll be some long-term jobs potentially, and if we can map it even in some really broad strokes uh, timeline-wise, I want to provide that information to her and to look into um, job opportunities training so people have advance notice as opposed to just before starting construction saying there are three jobs available and nobody had any heads up right. on that. Yeah. Right. Okay, cool. I'm glad that conversation is happening. I was just curious, um, but thanks for yes. sharing. That. Absolutely. I'd love more resources though as we continue. And I mean, I haven't even updated uh rick parker or any other so i know there's a lot of resources <laughs> available locally that was just came up a conversation uh, not too long ago yep, yep. any other comments or thoughts or okay hey we really appreciate everybody it's so great to see everybody virtually um one of our, if you go back just a second i just want to remind everybody um this is our noon session, our fourth session. We've got one coming up at five o'clock on sustainability green strategies. Very interesting, very pertinent. Uh, and then tomorrow morning, our brunch session on uh, history and art, uh, artlets, that idea we're gonna introduce and then uh, wrap up. And then the next one, again, is just reiterating. Next slide. Hey, um, our website, please visit. Uh, uh, lots of information there. Tweet us out, um, hashtag there, gram us, um, whatever you want, um, just spread the word. You know, uh, we want to make sure everybody uh, has an opportunity to input. So, uh, and these will be uploaded uh, shortly, um, next day or so, if not sooner, and uh, available for review and comment. Yeah, Thanks just a reminder to everyone that the website also allows input of additional thoughts on these topics or on any other. There's free form uh, ways to input and to ask questions. So uh, please definitely go to the website. Great, great. Thank you so much, Rick, you're right. Um, hey, and you can send a postcard, you can write, you get whatever you, however you wanna get in touch with us. We accept all means of communications, right? Postcard.
Pigeon carrier, whatever strikes so your thank fancy. You it's a great conversation, great. Uh, and I appreciate all the cooperation. It's a really uh, great community. We're, we're getting that in all these sessions. People, there's a lot of just cooperation and working together on, on issues and ideas. All right, thanks y'all. Talk to some of you later. Bye-bye.